Hello YouTube, I'm David Frankel and I'm here in Karlsruhe. That is a tram. In that building are a bunch of trains and that is a tram train. Things are about to get confusing. Welcome to Karlsruhe. In 1992, the city of Karlsruhe in southwest Germany took one small step for tram, one giant leap for urban transport, going where no tram has gone before, on a mainline railway. Tram trains connect tram stops in the centre of Karlsruhe with nearby towns such as Heilbronn and Baden-Baden. Actually, Karlsruhe wasn't the first to do this, Vienna's been doing it since 1886, but we'll talk more about that later. The origins of this concept, within Karlsruhe at least, can be found on the Alb Valley Railway, the Albtalbahn, which terminated at a small station near the Hauptbahnhof called the Albtalbahnhof, until in 1958 it was connected to the Karlsruhe tram network, and light rail cars provided direct services between tram stops in Karlsruhe city centre and the Albtalbahn. In the 1980s, tram services began using the Hartbahn under a similar arrangement, sharing tracks with goods trains. From 1992 onwards, a number of connections have been built between the tram and the mainline rail network, with Karlsruhe trams providing an S-Bahn-like service in the region. Karlsruhe's tram system is thus split into two networks, the Strassenbahn, regular tram services in Karlsruhe with simple numbered routes, and the Stadtbahn, tram train services with line numbers prefixed S, in the style of an S-Bahn network. The Strassenbahn operates similar GT670D and GT870D trams, and the newer Stadler NET 2012 CityLink trams, which are also deployed on the Albtalbahn, but are limited in their use as they're unidirectional. Residents of Sheffield might recognise the tram as the Class 399 CityLink used on the Sheffield Rotherham tram train was based on these units. The Stadtbahn mainly operates GT680C tram trains, a cousin of the ubiquitous Stadtbahn B trams found all over Germany. Newer Flexity Swift ET 2010s can also be found. Stadtbahn and Strassenbahn services within Karlsruhe run on regular tram lines, but congestion in the city centre has resulted in new plans to build a tunnel, which is currently under construction, but that's a topic for another time. I ride the S7 from the tram platforms at Karlsruhe Hauptbahnhof via Albtalbahnhof to Baden Baden. Some Stadtbahn services, such as the S71, run entirely on the main line using the main line platforms at Hauptbahnhof instead of the tram platforms. These are mainly peak time supplementary services. This one is the S81. Oh, it's just turned into the S81. So I think you have some routes where it runs through the tram line into the city centre and then goes off to join the railway to serve some other somewhere else nearby. But there are some routes where it's just a tram that runs entirely on the mainline network, and these are the kind of supplementary services. I think that's what's going on.
nächsten Anschlüsse RE nach Karlsruhe Hauptbahnhof. Abfahrt 16.28 Uhr von Gleis 2. Und so, hier bin ich am Baden-Baden. Baden-Baden-Baden. Baden, Baden. So the S7 actually continues on here to Aachen. This is otherwise a regular mainline station with ICE, TGV, and the occasional Swiss intercity train. I mean, where else can you find ICE, TGV trains and trams running on the same pair of rails? It's brilliant. And they've been doing this for absolutely decades, and in the UK it's still treated as such a novel concept. Karlsruhe's mode mixing has become a whole new model which other cities in Europe have adopted. Tram train services under the Karlsruhe model can also be found in Cologne, Chemnitz and Saarbrücken. As mentioned earlier, Vienna has been operating its own tram train services between Vienna and Baden, the Badener Bahn, since 1886, but nobody seems to give them any credit. Huh, that's weird. Then there's also the town of Zikau, where trains run onto the tram network, a train tram if you like, but that's a story for a whole other video. In 2019, the first tram train in the UK opened in the form of the Rotherham extension to the Sheffield Super Tram, sharing a tiny section of track between Meadow Hall and Rotherham Central. But because the Sheffield trams are low floor, Rotherham Central had to have a second set of platforms for the trams. The trams then come off the main line and terminate at Parkgate Station. I've done a video all about it, which you can go watch. There are also some similarities, but also key differences, between Karlsruhe's network and Manchester's. Both systems have adopted the strategy of taking over neglected or lightly used commuter lines. Manchester did this with the Berry, Altrincham and Oldham loop lines, whilst Karlsruhe did this with the Albertalbahn and the Hartbahn. However, unlike the lines in Manchester, these legally remain railway lines. In Manchester, the trams are vigorously separated from the main line network. Though some physical junctions do exist, they're not used. This leads to some awkward situations, such as at Navigation Road, where both trains and trams operate on a single track, and at Newton Heath, where trams go down to single track to allow freight trains to reach the Greater Manchester Waste Disposal Facility. Trams in Karlsruhe, on the other hand, happily share tracks with both mainline passenger and freight trains, saving a lot of cost and awkwardness, and allowing the network to be easily expanded. Another key difference between Karlsruhe and both Manchester and Sheffield is that the tram vehicles are able to take their power from mainline wires. In Sheffield, the existing route was diesel, so the overhead wires installed for the tram train are only used by tram train vehicles. But the whole, it makes me realise that the entire Sheffield Rotherham scheme it is, totally defeats the purpose because it only, the tram only serves one national rail station, Rotherham Central. It does not connect any two national rail stations. So it's not part of the national rail network at all, it's still very much a tram that very briefly shares tracks with the mainline trains. But because of the platform height differences, they have their own platforms at Rotherham Central. So it begs the question, well, what's the point? Here, it's actually so integrated that it requires no real modification of the stations it serves, because the trams themselves are kind of the height is about halfway between heavy rail height and light rail height and so it just stops and then carries on and it means you don't have to build a tram line out here because you can just run trams on the line that's already here thus saving you a lot of money unlike Rotherham where they had to heavily modify the main line to rebuild the station add the second set of platforms electrify it because it's a diesel line so Really, it makes me wonder what the point of the Rotherham scheme was in the first place, apart from to simply demonstrate that it can be done in the UK, which it, effect it effectively demonstrated that it can't be done effectively. <laughs> so here I am at Baden-Baden station. Now the actual town of Baden-Baden is about seven kilometers that way. I could hop on a bus, but it's already four o'clock and I can't really be bothered. So I think I'm just going to go carry on to Strasbourg via regular train. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.